Hello! Flipping through the channels, are we? Well, welcome to the Inner Sanctum of TVDays.com, where today we're going to take a look at saving TV history and your own film history with external drives. Stop the machine! This film's so old it just breaks up in your fingers. Can't you patch it together again? Not a chance. Celluloid's only good for 20 years or so, and then it gets so brittle you can't hardly touch it. What do you mean? You mean that we can't even see it? Now that we have it? There's just nothing you can do about it. Welcome to Celluloid. For the last three or four years, I've taken you through my storage facility, and you've seen all the celluloid films that I've had to transfer and process to videotape with for over 30 years now. 30 years of collecting. This right here was from Bert Heck. He worked in advertising at NBC in the, in the 50s and he would take film prints home. And half hour shows were made on kinescopes. That as the show is going live, a camera, 16 millimeter camera or 35 would be on the TV screen shooting a film print. And like here is, happens to be a half hour show on a smaller reel because someone took the commercials out. These were the commercials. Each one was a 60 or a 30 second commercial sent to the, the local stations. They would then take the commercial from the ad agency or the company. The 30 second or commercial would be edited into the film print. And then the film print would be shown live on the air. A good yarn, but Quake is better. Ow! Quest! But now, all my celluloid film prints and video elements are decomposing, just like your home videos are, and now we have to digitize it. But it's a lot more than just throwing it all into the computer and then putting it onto a DVD. There's a lot of process in between. Because what happens when the computer crashes? That external, those drives inside the computer are not going to last forever. And you want to fill it up with something else. But even in the moisture-controlled vaults, celluloid will last no more than 20 years, for no other satisfactory material has ever been found. And each generation, the library must reprint each film again. The last 30 years, it's been all transferred to Bader SP and three-quarter tape. And this is how people have been able to watch my stuff over the years. But now it's all decomposing, just like your VHSs are, just like your DVs are, and just like how many re remember Super VHS. All of this now has to be digitized. Then you put it all into your computer, and then where do you put it? People advertise, oh, there's a lot of storage in your camera, there's a lot of storage in your computer, but eventually it all has to become part of an external drive on your shelf and save as backup. And that's why I've always been a fan of Seagate drives. But this is what's remarkable. Four years ago, when I started putting up videos, and there are over 10,000 videos on Google and YouTube, they run anywhere from 30 seconds to an hour and a half feature films and silent epics. You name it, we've been putting it up for everybody up there, but it's all been backed up. The first four years, right here, all these drives are 300 gigabytes each. All these drives equal a two terabyte drive by Seagate. Remarkable, as well as a two terabyte external SATA drive by Seagate. But if you think this is all I have, there's a whole shelf of four years of various sizes and shapes of external SATA drives that need to be saved. As a small stock footage company, I've been going crazy when I go to make my own documentaries or have to give clips to people. I have to go through all those drives and download them all. And, and I've been going crazy to figure out when, finally, am I going to find the right system to use. And, and then, at b and I found the Drobo Pro Desktop SATA Drive Console. Here it is, folks. There are storage in this computer system for eight, two, or two and a half terabyte drives each. So right now in this system, 
I have eight two terabyte drives. That's 16 terabytes of material that I am now organizing all my material in, all my videos in. So on my first drive, I'm now preparing all my TV commercials. In the second drive, I'm making sure that all my kid shows are lined up in chronological order for you guys to study. And then in my next drive, drive three, I have all my newsreels, the best of what took place in the world when I was growing up and today are all in these drives. And then I have my silent films, the history of D.W. Griffith and all the biograph films. He made over 450 of them. Almost all of them and his feature films are starting to be collected in these drives. By the time I'm done, you'll be able to get all the B Westerns that Roy Rogers and Buster Crabbe and all the unknown Western stars that you don't see anymore are all being saved. So almost, I would say, in this one drive of 16 terabytes is the history of early film and television that you're not going to find in any museum or television or any internet system in the world. This is over 40 years of collecting. And I know damn well I'm going to have to get two more of these and more drives to organize all those other external drives. But for the first time in my life, I want to be organized. And I'm quite excited about it. And what's nice is, when I'm done at the end of the day, Data Robotics has a great cover. And it's dust-free. Now, the system boasts of how there's lots of backup systems in here. I haven't learned how to do that yet, because all I've been interested in doing is organizing my videos. Then when I get a second or third system, we'll start thinking other terms. Data Robotics really has created a remarkable system because the Data Pro can be plugged in to your computer system and onto the Adobe timeline and it doesn't slow up at all going from one drive to the other. It's a remarkable system and it works flawlessly. There I have 16 terabytes of video that I can go to and access to create whatever documentary I want to do. So that's what's so great about what Data Robotics has created. In the meantime, unless my computer and the internet crashes, I'll see you next time on TVDays.com. Save some TV history. Record your own history. Find your family members from the past. Record them on video. Cut it into a good presentation. Let them document their own home movies. The same way I have to start locating, or maybe you can do that for me, the people in these rare TV shows and commercials I'm finding. You, tell me. Somewhere out there you have to know the people in these commercials. And we're going to have a contest for that. Because you could still go out tomorrow and save a piece of TV and film history and write about it. And with all this stock footage, I'm now giving you a chance to go out and make video documentaries. There's a lot to do with this stuff if you use it correctly. And we'll talk about that next time. Good night.